Billy, the Red Wings have finally broken out of the slump and have absolutely been heating up lately. In their last 10 games, they boast a 7-2-1 record, including a sweep of the California road trip, which I don't know I don't know what the stat was on that, if we haven't done that in how long or, or whatever it was, but pretty big deal. We are recording this before the Sunday uh, night game against Tampa. So that record could be a little better, could be a, a little worse by the time you're seeing this. But I want to open today's video with a question for you and everyone at home watching. So feel free to drop a comment to this question. What would you credit this recent surge of success to the most? It's got to be goaltending. I think the goaltending is absolutely stepped up. I think our offense has stayed pretty consistent, and I think our defense is still giving up a couple too many opportunities, uh, too many good opportunities than I think they should be. And it was in our Discord that I talked about this a little bit, and I think really when it comes down to being a hockey team, you have three three things. Offense, defense, goaltending, right? That's like you can throw coaching in there too. It's definitely going to play a part, but I de or mostly is going to be what's on the ice, right? And I think if you have any two of those, you're probably a playoff team. And I think if you have three of those, you're a threat in the playoffs, right? And right now mm -hmm. we're getting two of those. We're getting the good goaltending and we're getting good offense. It's kind of what we were seeing a little bit earlier in the season. I think our defense was a little better back then. I think we've definitely taken a step back throughout the season like that. But like with those three pillars, our, our offense has stayed pretty consistent all year. Our defense has gotten worse, but our goaltending has gotten better. And I think that's what's shown you that like kind of up and down. So with where we are right now, I'm pretty okay with, you know, having one pillar strong, one pillar showing up hot right now and one that, that needs some work. Yeah, we talked about earlier in the season, we were doing the three goalie rotation. And granted, we, we tried to justify it it's not something we're used to seeing a ton of but we were saying we were trying to think that hey you have three goalies if one's faltering you know the other two could pick it up there's a possibility this is pure speculation on why lion would be would be heating up so much right now but when every goalie is playing maybe once a week i've never played much goalie and you know neither of us have played at like a super competitive level where who knows that maybe with the goaltending, there is that little bit of uh, rhythm that gets lost when you're only getting put in once a week. And I want to say when, when the injuries happen, Lyon ended up being our first goalie all year that started four games in a row. Yeah. And during that time is when he started to heat up. I looked up his, uh, his save percentage, which obviously save percentage is, is what it is. Take it just at face value here. But he's top five in the league at a 922 out of all goalies who have played as many games as he had or more. So I put it at 16 games played or more. His 922 has him tied for, I think it's either the fourth or fifth spot. And that's something you like to see as a fan who was watching someone like Huso, Lyon, and, and Reimer struggle in those early weeks where it seemed like we had to score a ton of goals to stay competitive in these games. So I'm, I'm with you. I wish I could bring another thing that I could point to for the surge of success, but goaltending feeling like it's been stepping up. And the reason why it's more than just this nine, two, two save percentage is a lot of the opportunities that were being given up to someone like a Huso. you know, everybody wanted to jump on the Huso, Hey, and rightfully so or not, maybe he really wasn't doing that well overall. But the, the fact of the matter was he was being put in some pretty terrible situations early on. There were a lot of shorthanded breakaway opportunities, two on ones, uh, just breakaways in general that or backdoor, easy, uncontested plays that were just making him look worse than he actually was. And the problem that we said we had is we had three fine goalies. We didn't have a goalie that was going to steal a game for you make miraculous saves in a big in a big uh, situation. But I've been seeing that from Lyon lately. There's been mm -hmm. a lot of recent moments where Alex Lyon has stepped up and made a big save. You know, I'm not talking like constant, you know, miracle saves, but making saves that are definitely high percentage scoring opportunities where he's coming up big. And I think those moments absolutely have to be contributing to this recent stretch of a uh, seven, two and one record that by the time this video goes up, could be better. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to face a really hot Tampa team. So let's see what happens there. I think they, they also have like a seven and three in their last 10. So that'll be a good game. But I also want to give credit to the other goalie who performed in this, in this time. 
And that is Reimer. You know, he did go into Toronto and he did only let up two goals. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. I believe that team is averaging over three goals per game. We've seen how, how strong their offense can always be. And Reimer went in and, you know, beat his old team. That's really nice yeah. to see him and Hall. Gotta feel good. Yeah. Him and Hall being on the ice together, be like the first two people to celebrate the win. Made me feel a little good inside. When I saw those two like bump helmets together, I was like, hell yeah, you go into Toronto and you get that W you, you let them know that you're better off now. And I do want to credit again, um, through this entire thing that Steve Eiserman, the way he built this team is why we beat Toronto. If you watch that goal, it, uh, I believe it was cop won the face off and ends up being like the game winning goal through that scenario. I believe, believe, but, uh, we were up against some of their, their weaker players. Some of those, you know, AHL players that I say they like to put on their third and fourth lines because, you know, 75% of their cap is invested in five players. So, you know, shout out to Steve Eiserman for keeping our third and fourth lines at NHL caliber so that they can go into places like Toronto where our top line can compete. I'm not saying our top line is better than Toronto's. I think that's objectively not true, but when, when you can start leaning on the depth of your team to start coming through, that's when it starts to work out. And I know a lot of people have been hard on cop and hard on comfort cop. I believe has two game winning goals in the last week and a half or so. So yeah, let's, let's uh, really start to appreciate the depth guys and why they're here. I'm with you. And one thing I want to bring up on these recent games, and this is something um, maybe I should have brought this up to you. Uh, before we recorded, maybe you'd have a little something prepared. Uh, but something I came across when I was looking at these recent games, uh, two of the losses, one against Edmonton, one against Carolina. Those are actually, I believe, the two most recent losses. Two stats, or the stat that stands out in both of those games in particular that isn't consistent in the other games we're on at where we're winning is the shots on net. Yep. If you look at the Edmonton game where we won in overtime, the Wings were outshot 47 to 18 against Carolina. They were outshot 30 to 12. Where does that, where does that come from? Because I know everybody wants to just shoot the puck and it's more goals, more goals. Are the wings holding out too much on looking for a certain opportunity? Is it, is it we're missing the net too much? I don't understand how you can go through an NHL game, only lose four to two and only get 12 shots that are considered and i know shots are just a, a, a terrible shot versus a scoring opportunity is totally different but when you look at the last two games that we've lost during this hot stretch for whatever reason the wings were held to way less than half than their opponent's shots and they lose both of those games yeah i think it's for two very different reasons through the two games which probably creates you know all sorts of hell for the coaching room to figure out like how they need to start approaching each one of these scenarios differently. But with the Oilers, you should be getting more shots. I think you absolutely should be. They, they aren't a team that thrives defensively or with goaltending. So I believe in that game, I would honestly just credit the Oilers forwards on like great four checks and just high pressure throughout the entire ice and not giving the Red Wings much time or space. They're also a very fast team. The Red Wings, not really the fastest team. Like, you got Larkin, who's got some speed. Uh, that might be our only speedy guy. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. Like, Debrinkit doesn't have, like, killing speed by any means like that. So, I think they were able to bring, like, high pressure and just keep the puck in our zone and, you know, put pucks on our net and kind of control play because I guess they just have those higher skilled players at the top of their lineups. And with Carolina, that's Carolina's game plan. But what happened to us is exactly what they would love to happen Every single game. That team is so solid defensively. They have the reputation across the entire league of being the most boring and hated to watch team because of the way they play. They play like the Islanders do. They play like the the Panthers do, where they like to play that trap. They like to play physical. They like to bring pressure up at the blue line. And this is something I want to talk about with the Red Wings defense. We don't. Nietzsche's goal um, with the Hurricanes the other night was all because Mata had some weird, silly pressure towards the blue line, but he didn't look comfortable with it whatsoever, so he got crossed up a little bit, and then Nietzsche just gets a, a decent... Uh, he takes a good shot, but he had a decent opportunity. He makes a great shot, ends up scoring, 
But if you watch the Red Wings back on the other side, the the Hurricanes defense, they're used to just pressuring right at that blue line. They're used to stepping up knowing they have the back check help. And that's another thing that you and I, when we were going back and watching through the replay, is that there was a horrible line change in the Toronto game, right? Where our forwards just, I think it was Raz and Valeno, both changed at the same time, both changed lazily, ends up going down into his own. Petrie, Sherratt get crossed up. One of them goes deeper than they should have, ends up for a really up top play where Debrinkit, what is he supposed to do, I guess, in the scenario, and ends up in the net. So, yeah, I just think... Uh, we we don't like to take the opportunities I think that are given to us. Sometimes I think we look to make that extra pass. Um, sometimes it works for us. Sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, the, those are embarrassing numbers that bring us back to like the 2017 Red Wings. The, the extra pass, I I can't remember if it was the last game or the game before. Uh, there was the extra pass. I think it was to Perron, wide gaping net misses the net. It was yep. it, it completely had the goalie fooled. The, the, the moments like that are tough, but yeah, I I'm, I'm, I'm with you on. I did want to look that up uh, while you were talking about it, just to confirm lion was in net for both of those games. So two scenarios where your goalie who has been hot and have been a reason for a lot of your wins, you're not doing, doing him any uh, favors during that game and creating offense uh, on the other end. I do. I want to bring up uh, to bring it has kind of cooled off which is interesting that your goal scorer is cooling off during your hot stretch, which you could look at it two ways. We should be, you could look at it as you would heat up. We'd be better than seven, two and one in that stretch and be even better. Or I mean, Mr. Optimism as always. I like that the offense is cre- or that the team is creating offense as a unit mm-hmm. and not dependent on whether or not your goal scorer is scoring goals. You've got, Guys, like I think it was cop on the face off to win it back to Mata, and you got someone like Raz finally using that big body in front of the net, getting the tips. That's what we asked for. That's what we were talking about earlier in the season in these videos, and we're creating uh, scoring opportunities from those. Yeah, so it, it links right back to what we said, where we have NHL talent through our entire lineup, and not every team does. Like because the players in the NHL does not make them NHL caliber talent, right? I think that's a very important distinction to make that. You know, you could bring up Aston Reese right now as the Red Wings. You could say, oh, he's our fourth center. You know he shouldn't be, though. You know that he shouldn't. Yep. And that's kind of what other other teams are starting to deal with, that they don't have this, you know, great well to go to to bring players up to to be able to have them perform down their lineup. So, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Hap- the happiest part for me of this whole stretch is it, it feels like we have – we have our solidified number one goalie. It is Alex Lyon. There's no no doubt about that right now. Is it going to be like that in a month? I don't know. But we spent the first few months of the season with this rotation unsure, feeling equal every night, just about, of you're going in. You don't feel that much different on how it's going to go. And now Lyon has gone on the stretch. I feel good um, with how he's been performing. You know, sometimes the aggressive stuff gets me a little nervous, but he's he's making it work. He's coming up with some big stops. He's taking risks and it's working. I like him in the shootout, by the way. That's where I like the aggressiveness because the rebound doesn't matter anymore. Uh, this team, you don't want to take the wings to a shootout. Apparently, it's it, you, you're not going to win it. Um, but speaking of uh, our, you know, scariness in the shootout, Kane's been out for a little bit, took a weird hit. Uh we, we watched it back a couple times. Looks like, I don't know if that was the same shift that they were clipping, but he took the hit against Toronto. And then I, I don't know if it was shortly after where he had a weird fall yes, it um, was. near the net where he also kind of landed on his side. They originally called it a lower body injury, which that's just how it is in the NHL. They'll say upper or lower. Um, but then the wings did clarify that they're saying it's not hip related. He said he was going to miss the current road trip. Um, does that include Tampa? Uh, is it, is that in Tampa or is that here? No, that's here. Um, so I haven't seen anything about him saying that he's going to be playing in the Sunday game. Maybe they weren't, wouldn't release that until they released the lines. Um, hopefully that's not too long because he's been finding his way. He's been a very fun part of the team to watch. We got a nice showtime, uh, showtime goal from him. Uh, it's That would really suck. And you brought up a question to me that I would kind of throw to everybody else. You know, what are the odds that a team would be dishonest about these 
specifics of an injury just so maybe it doesn't maybe get tart. Cause I know that's why they only say upper or lower body. Yeah. They, they say they don't say elbow so that someone doesn't take a stick to their elbow. They'll say upper or lower. And they're saying it's not a hip related injury. Is there any chance that that's to protect him a little bit from somebody trying to target that hip even more? Yeah. That it could be some gamesmanship going on there. I'm pretty sure. I, now this would have been honestly like 12 years ago or so, but I remember it pretty vividly cause I was in college and I was watching like a, a Sunday afternoon game or something between the the Flyers and the Penguins. It was some big hyped matchup. Both teams are great. Like rivalry was going super strong. And I believe it was Mike Milbury was on the broadcast. And he kind of went on a, I don't know if you should be telling everyone this kind of deal. But he did say that like with his time when he was in, a, in an NHL org in the front office. Is that, yeah, they would lie. He, would, he yeah. would just be like, yeah, if it was something with his wrist, we didn't care if we said it was lower body. Like, we don't want everyone going out there doing that to our guys. I don't know if that's changed. I don't know if that was, like, against the rules and he just, you know, well, went against it. I, but I, I know with football, and especially because the, the one thing that has changed across all sports right now is sports betting. Mm -hmm. And I know with football, there is, like, a you have to – there so things need to be reported – this needs to be that this needs to be accurate by this date or this time. So I don't know if that's changed in the world of hockey as well because of sports betting. And because like, if you straight up lie and say someone's not hurt when he is, that would affect a lot of people who have a lot of money invested, which whether that's right or wrong is a whole separate conversation, mm -hmm. but we're living um, in reality here. We're talking about the yeah, world. So yeah, this is just, this is just how it is. So I would imagine I would, I would think that, there would be some sort of not honor system. That's the opposite of what I'm trying to say. A, a, is there some sort of a system where you got to tell someone, mm -hmm. maybe someone needs to know the truth. And when it comes to the public, but then even that, like, I, I don't know. I really wish I had an answer. Maybe any of you know a little bit more about this. If, if there is some sort of rule on, you know, how straightforward teams need to be about injuries nowadays, especially in a gambling world that we live in. I, uh, at the end of the day, I hope he's fine. Yeah. I would it would be it would be devastating if it was the hip, if it got reaggravated, because even if he does come back soon, I hope that doesn't create any sort of difference in his play. Cause I I've loved watching him. Like so yep. much more fun to watch him when he's on your team. I'm telling you. It's it's yeah. it's a lot of fun to watch the guy just be on the ice, touch the puck. So it would really be uh it would be sad for the fans and for him as well if his game had to be altered or hold back a little bit to protect something that may be coming back yeah and to live in the world of uncertainty again and just for billy's speculation here when i watch the video the way he gets hit up against the boards and like his lower body kind of goes flat against the boards with his left leg up so like his butt gets like pushed hard against that and then he skates down the ice and then he gets tripped and he falls back on that left hip again and he's, he's getting up it, it seems like a little slow maybe i'm just looking too much into that but what i really looked into the most was when he gets to the bench, it looks like with his left hand, it's like he's like pulling on his inner thigh a little bit, like he's shifting the pad around and like kind of messing with the inner thigh. To me, that could be a groin, and yeah, a groin issue could keep you out for a week or longer. That's not that mm -hmm. uncommon in the NHL. It would also not cause like too much concern, and it wouldn't be hip-related. So if you made me speculate on just what I saw entirely and if they are telling the truth that it's not hip related i really think it's a groin issue which yeah could be like another few days or so especially you know someone maybe a little older could be a few more games that he's out but i mean you've been doing well yeah. i know he was a big part of that it was only in the toronto game that he he uh, left it but yeah we're hoping that he's good hoping that he's better very soon well the sport of hockey, as you like to word it, uh, is better with him playing in it. So hopefully he's good. Hopefully we see him again uh, back in the wing wheel soon. Maybe he'll play in Tampa. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Uh, answer the question from the beginning of the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Join the Discord to talk more about the wings. And we will see you guys in the next one.